Okay. Um, today we have to talk about this, and now you're going to say, what? Didn't you already review that? No, I did not. I had a Furore. I left it in my pocket when I washed it, and I used a cold wash, and it came out bigger than before. <laughs> it's not that funny. Um, here on the right, is this mirrored? No, I think it's not mirrored, is it? Uh, here on the right is a Furore, and on the left is a Furore Grande. Grande, uh, which has all kinds of massive improvements over the Furora, which I already loved. The material is stellar. What can I say? I have been, every opportunity I got in these videos, I kept kind of, you know, Salvatore, who makes these pens. We need a Furore. We need a Furore. We need a Furore Grande. And now we have a furore grande and then Salvatore contacted me and he said do you want one I said I don't of course I want one and then he sent me one so I'm going to review that with much thanks to Salvatore for sending me because I really appreciate it I know this was a highly anticipated pen it definitely was for me uh, I, I uh, am very grateful for companies that sent me pens because it allows me to keep making these videos and that is material that you enjoy. I hope this will be interesting. Let's look at the Furore and of course at some point there must be a shootout between the Furore and the Furore Grande. But for now I'm going to show you the past the pen. I will do a writing sample. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Let's get cracking. Okay, the Furore Grande Pistone. Very nice box. I really like the art on this, it's very colourful and it really stands out and I, 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 it's just very happy with all the yellow, which is exactly what we need in these troubled times. Leonardo Officina Italiana, fatto a mano in Italia, handmade in Italy, more than 45 years of experience from father to son, Giro Matrone to Salvatore, and the story goes on. Here we have something that looks a lot like Delft Blau to me. Probably isn't, but... When you know, you know. Uh, then there is on this side more of that colorful material, and then we have this. Now this is a sleeve. Here we have this black cardstock sleeve with the beautiful Leonardo Officina Italiana embossing. It's one of those, I always consider these to be wings, um, and I love that. I, I, for some reason I really like that logo, that's just me. Then, in there, is another cardboard sleeve. No, this is the box, which is nice and simple, and I like this simple, nice, black box. Uh, I like it. You open it up, and then you have the little booklet. I'll come back to that. You have the pen sleeve, and you have a bottle of blue ink. Oh, sorry, that's not the camera. This is the camera. A bottle of blue ink. I like these, these bottles with the, with the corners. It's just cute. I haven't used that. Because it's a new ink I haven't used before, and if I do a review, I want to be able to tell you whether a pen is wet or dry, and if I don't know the properties of the ink, I don't know if it's the pen or the ink that makes the pen wet or dry, if that makes sense. If not, tough titties at the kitty when it ran out of milk. We continue. Um, Furore, grande pistone. Uh, same, again, I really like it, but I've said that. Uh, here we have the Made in Italy card, cento per cento italiano, uh, which I really like. We have a certificate of authenticity. We have um, this is, I am pretty sure, this is Furo, uh, Furore, the uh, Fjord at Furore. Look it up because that's what the pen is named after. We got a couple of finishes right now. That purple is also very pretty, by the way. Uh, here you have all four finishes. I also really like this. I like them all. The Hawaii is pretty too, but but the Smeraldo, uh, that one, that has my heart. Stole my heart, you say in English. The name Furore is inspired by the famous fjord located on the Amalfi coast. The small village of Furore is hidden there. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1997. We have an international warranty, we have piston filling instructions, and we would have the stamp of the uh, shop. Now, let's have a look at the Furore Grande. I'm going to zoom in. 
I will show you this, this is not a shootout, but I will show you this next to the regular Furore, so you get a bit of an idea for the size increase. And then here we have a Pilot Metropolitan, also known as this Metropolitan, and um, now you can see them side by side. Also interesting, I would say, that the Furore is a bit bluer in Smeraldo than the Furore Grande. And I'm not yet sure which of the two I like more. I may like both of them equally, but that's rather beside the point for today. Let's talk about the pen. So the parts of the pen, the top of the cap, same material as the rest of the cap. I always like that because visually it looks very consistent. We have the clip, and the clip is actually uh, sort of 1930s vintage inspired, and as you can see, it's a little narrower than the clip on the regular Furore. Yes, yes, eye for detail. We have two rings there. This is silver trim, uh, or chrome trim, maybe? Cro I won't say chrome trim. I don't think it's silver on this model. We have another ring there. We have a ring here. We have a piston turning knob. This is not a blind cap. On the Furore, this is a blind cap, and then there is a converter in there. But this is an actual piston, and this doesn't come off. This shouldn't come off, okay? Don't, don't yank this off. We have an engraving here that says Leonardo Officina Italiana. This is number 54. Nice, 54. And um, one thing I wanted to point out, I will come back to that in likes and dislikes, but note that the cap lip is different. The regular Fiora has a straighter cap lip. The Fiore Grande has a more tapered cap lip. I prefer this. I think that looks really good, but I'll come back to that. We unscrew the cap, but people always want to know this and I always forget. Okay, so one and a quarter turns, and then we have the pen uncapped. One thing I will say, because I already recorded the likes and dislikes, and I forgot to say that, there is no ink window. And with a piston filler, you, you don't know how much ink you have. I just hold it up to the window, but I can't. it's not translucent, so I can't see how much ink is in there. The section has this taper down, just like the regular Furore, except now it has a metal ring at the end. Um, and this section does not come off. It actually comes with the warning to not try and disassemble this, because it is... I don't know if it's one piece, I'm guessing not, but I think it is glued in place. So don't don't try to unscrew this, that's not what you're supposed to do. The section. Um, my first reaction to seeing these all the way back in the Momento Zero was that's a somewhat peculiar looking section. All I can say about it is I find it comfortable. I really, really find it comfortable. Um, there is a bit of a step down from the barrel, as you can see, but it's not huge. And it has this nice rounded metal ring, so it's not sharp. These threads I don't find sharp at all either, plus they are almost entirely flush with the pieces next to them, making for a very comfortable pen to hold in my mind. It's a steel fine nib with Leonardo on it, as well as Italy, and those wings again. And then there is an ebonite feed. So even with the steel nib, you get an ebonite feed, which I think is great. For those of you who enjoy that, the uh, clip, of course, has the little wheel that Leonardo does, very Delta-esque. It's a nice and springy clip, and it does post. And you do have a pretty big pen, but if you really like to post, then you can. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Let's do a little bit of writing. I messed that up. Furore Grande. It's a fine steel, and this is Leonardo Turquoise. So that's another Leonardo ink, but that one I already owned, so I knew about the properties of that ink. What I really like, I will point out that I'm writing on the back of the notebook, which is a sort of plastified material, and that makes the pen sound scratchier, I found. If I do this here, it probably sounds less scratchy than if I do this here. Okay? The fun thing is, it's definitely, I would say, a true fine. A true fine nib, and it's not scratchy. There is some feedback, as you would expect from a fine, 
but it's actually a very pleasant writer and jumps again the microphone will pick this up and it'll sound like scratchiness but it's not I wonder if I can make a difference this way probably not but yeah. anyway uh, This is not a comfortable writing position, so I'm going to put it back. Uh, take my word for it or not, I don't find it scratchy at all. I have had scratchy nibs in the past. This is not one of them. I don't mean from Leonardo, I mean just in general. This is not one of them. Um, it's not a super wet writer, but again, it's nicely tuned. As you can see, it's, it, it, I haven't had it run dry on me. I haven't had it draw a vacuum. For a fine, I think it does a really nice job in being just wet enough. Now, it is round and as to springiness as always very careful it's not a flex nib I wouldn't say this is the springiest of springy nibs but you can probably get a little bit of line variation out of it if you decide that that's how you want to approach this uh, reverse writing does take it from a fine to an extra fine. It is possible, it gets a little bit scratchier, uh, but you already start off with a fairly fine nib. I truly do find this a fine. This is not a medium, this is a fine. And I happen to have here something else that Salvatore sent me. This will be another review. This is the updated Momento Zero Grande. Um, this is a medium nib, but it's a different ink. That is, in my mind, a true medium. So, there is that. I think what we need to do next is talk about what I like and what I don't like. And something I did want to say was, it took me a little bit of fiddling, but I found out that if I put in the pen like this, that the chatoyance lines up really quite nicely between cap and barrel, and then the engraving also lines up with the clip, which, you know, small visual thing, but I know people care about that, so let me point that out for you. You can make those, those Chateauian versus the dark bits uh, line up pretty well on this pen. And I really like that. All right, let's see what I like, what I don't like. Pow pow! All right, what do I like, what do I not like about the Furore Grande? Well, I like big pens and I cannot lie. And uh, this is definitely a big pen, but look, Here's the thing, I'm not paid by Leonardo to say anything, right? Like, he sends me the pen, I get to keep the pen, which is fantastic, at least I'm assuming I get to keep the pen, because if, <laughs> if you're hoping to get this back, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Just so you know. Um, but anyway, I have been tooting the horn of the Furore in the Smeraldo material. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's absolutely beautiful to me. And now this Fiore Grande, it's interesting. I have to show you this from a little bit of a distance. You can see there's a difference in colors. One is bluer, the other is more turquoise. That's the Grande. And, but again, it's the same thing. The, the Chateauians is overwhelming, but beautifully so. This is such, to me, such a wonderful material. I, I love this, and I love my Furore. The fact that this one, the Grande, is a Grande is a bit bigger is wonderful to me as the lover of larger pens. But I think a lot of good, good stuff has happened. Uh, the fact that it's not a cartridge converter pen, but an actual piston filler, an actual piston, is wonderful. I don't need the blind cap. Uh, I, I just don't care, really. So it's fine for me that the... the end of the barrel is the turning knob. Uh, same thing Mont Blanc does, same thing Pelican does, Ex uh, excuse me, Pelican does, um, so there is that. I like that. I like the slightly thinner clip on the Grande, which is reminiscent of a vintage pen, which I like. Although I'm not a vintage pen user, I like this clip. It's, it's good. Some people have complained it's a bit small as a clip, but it doesn't bother me, to be honest. So the material is great, the size is great, the, the piston is great, the, the, the nib is great. 
this is an improvement from that there were apparently some issues with the Bok nibs there's now a switch to Yovo which I think was a good switch these nibs are wetter out of the box they roll beautifully whereas a lot of the older nibs I found a bit drier I found a bit drier out of the box this is great one of my favorite improvements is a tiny detail but is that cap lip look at the cap lip on the this part right I'm talking about on the regular furore nothing wrong with that but now look at the cap lip on the grande that little bit of taper makes it so much more sleek this design looks beautiful and sleek to me this is a little blockier in the cap it's a tiny detail but I think it matters and what I find most important about that and I want to make this into something terribly grand but what I find very important about that is that in my mind the sign of a master at something is someone who who doesn't just say okay I've made this this is a furore and I'm gonna make a grande I'm just gonna take everything I did before but just make it a bit bigger because there are improvements there is the piston there is uh, in this case a new nib but, but sure but I mean but but what can I improve the design was already successful but that's not enough what can I improve what can I make even better and again in my mind that's a true master and that's also someone who cares about the products he or she makes in this case pens this is someone who elevates that pen to the next level with the new line making it a little better same thing he did with the uh, 2020 uh, Momento Zero Grandes that I, I will also review one because he sent me one of those as well where there also are subtle improvements like that so again I think that's that's a great sign other things I don't like so much for 243 euros and 80 cents minus VAT right so that's without VAT out within Europe you would pay uh, VAT on top of that you you get into the range where you could start to expect gold nib now the gold nib upgrades as I said they're not cheap 164 euros given that the pen is 240 euros you you, you see that that's that's almost doubling almost doubling price of the pen right that, that adds a lot to it but for me this steel nib writes so nicely I wouldn't want to spend the money on the gold nib it wouldn't be worth it for me your mileage of course may vary but for me it wouldn't be necessary uh, I, I, I have nothing against this nib it functions very nicely so that's it really um, you do get the ebonite feed which is great and I wish more companies would do that so that I think makes a big difference very solid ink flow without being a gusher without being excessively wet just a great ink flow great writer beyond that I don't have much to say about it except as I said the price I'm sure there are people who say at this price you should have a gold nib and yeah uh, hard to argue with given the price of these gold nibs bear in mind Leonardo I'm sure is not a company that makes one million of these pens a day right so to purchase the nibs in those quantities you have to look at that price so put that in perspective take it for what it is I will tell you this I love my Furore Grande and I um, I, I emphasize had I purchased this I would feel the same way about it because it's just a fantastic pen and I would be happy to pay that price for it but I won't because I'm stealing this one but beyond that <laughs> Yeah, I hope this was useful. I thank Salvatore once again, and I will gladly see you later. Bye bye.